All right. Well, thanks for coming. This is going to be a very different session than uh, most of the sessions you've seen here today. I hope. It'll be brief, and, uh, and then I'll be happy to hang around and chat with anybody who wants to talk. So um, let's get started. I'm also not texting on my phone. I'm trying to use this as a remote, so I just want you to know. Um, the best thing about this session, I should just say, is this is uncurated content. No one at FileMaker had to approve it because this is a vendor session. So I apologize in advance. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm a native New Yorker. I moved to St. Louis about 20-something years ago. Um, go Blues, if you're, if you're a Boston fan, I apologize. Um, I've got four kids. Um, I show them every year because I want everyone to see as they get older. But I'm a busy guy, as you can imagine. Got lots going on there. I've been using FileMaker, developing in FileMaker for over 30 years. I am no longer an active developer, although I stay certified. Um, so, but I'm involved in the business side, and that's what this is really going to be a little bit more about, is about the business side of being in the world of FileMaker. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for 25 plus years. I started out as MBR Consulting. You can guess where the name came from. It was just me. Uh, occasionally jobbing work out to other people. Eventually I formed Skeleton Key in 2004. We're an FBA platinum level member. We have a booth over there. But we're not selling anything. We're giving out something for free. I'm not going to ask you for any money. We're just offering advice and help to help people you know, have a better experience with their business, better experience with their development partner, maybe a better experience as an employee of a development company or an in-house developer. Um, I also have an IT organization that's part of our company that we uh, rebranded in 2012. So that's a managed services organization. It's a completely different animal um, than running a FileMaker shop. Um, and I've been speaking at DevCon since 2010, and if you've heard any of my previous sessions, they've either been on performance or they've been on relational modeling. And lately, it's been about business topics, you know, talking about growing your business, talking about prospecting and sales, talking about all the different things that kind of impact being successful. As, as Brad was saying in the keynote, you know, we want to grow this entire environment, but the only way to grow that is if all of you individual businesses actually succeed as businesses. And it's a lot more than just coding. It takes a whole lot more than that. So hopefully I'll shed a little bit of light on that. So here's the messy truth. Um, I'm going to cover, and this is a session objectives in kind of the short version. Um, a couple of the lessons I've learned along the way, kind of distilled one, two, three. Um, they're not all the lessons. They would take hundreds of slides to show you. Um, a little bit about our team at Skeleton Key and how we hire and how we choose people and what that's about. Um, some of the challenges, if you're a buyer, if you're a customer, and you actually hire a FileMaker development company, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges you may not realize your development partner is facing, um, which you might also be facing in your business, and maybe give you a little bit of a sense of um, a fair play there. And then, of course, anything else you guys bring up. Um, and of course, remember you got headphones on, so you're going to want to shout out your questions or comments at the end, and I'll try to repeat them for everybody else to hear because no one else will hear you. Um, all right. So lessons learned. I could, like I said, I could never show you all the lessons I've learned. Let's just say that we lost a lot of money in the first few years of Skeleton Key, uh, like six digits and multiple numbers, um, and mostly because we were ignorant. We didn't understand our finances. Um, we didn't understand how to hire, we didn't understand how to sell, we didn't understand how to bill, we didn't understand how to do almost anything. But we knew how to code, and so we hired a bunch of developers who knew how to code, and we did our best to kind of throw a bunch of code out there, and, and the rest just kind of demonstrated itself to us. We didn't borrow enough money, um, we did a bunch of things wrong. Uh, so the things I've learned over the years, uh, like I said, could fill tons of slides, but the ones I think that are most important is that um, if you are trying to go from being like a sole, solopreneur or you're trying to get your small shop to be a bigger shop, you got to have a plan and you have to keep updating that plan. Whether you do it annually or quarterly, you can't just do it once and then just hope to coast on that forever because too much will change in your business and so on. Um, you've got to get good at budgeting. And uh, for us, that means you know, forecasting what we think we're going to make as well as figuring out what we're going to spend um, and then using that budget to guide you during the year so you can learn when you do it the next year how wrong you did it. Uh, if we do anything right at Skeleton Key is we become really good at budgeting. Like we're within two points of our budget every year. It helps us make decisions as the year plays out about what we should or shouldn't spend. It helps us get to that net income that we want to make sure that we can survive in the coming years. Um, and we actually, we'd like to do it more frequently. Right now we do it annually, but I really honestly think we probably need to start doing it quarterly. Um, you need to educate and incent your team. I've talked in the past about how we practice open book management. Uh, like FileMaker, we try to be as transparent as possible and educate and incent our team. Whatever your methodology is, you got to find some way to get your employees to understand how your business runs. That this is not just about coding. This is about customer satisfaction and communication and all those other things. Um, and you got to give them a reason to care. It can't just be salary. It's got to be something else. It could be tickets to the ball game. It could be a profit sharing plan, whatever works for you. 
Um, but it's been instrumental in helping us take our company from 2009, where we were in a deep hole, not because of the economy, but because of me, um, and pull ourselves out and be able to grow and double in size and increase our net profitability and get a more regular rhythm going because I gave my people information and I gave them a reason to give a damn. Um, we joined several different peer groups. Um, this is maybe my biggest point I want to make today. So um, everyone here is going to talk to you about tech. Everyone here would be happy to sit down with you and open up your laptops and talk about the tech. But the most valuable things I've learned from the people in this room, some of which are sitting right here, have had nothing to do with FileMaker as a platform. They've had everything to do with just running my business in the FileMaker space. And in some ways, that's agnostic. It doesn't really matter if it's in the FileMaker space. It's just learning how to run a business. And so the only way we're going to succeed as an ecosystem is if we all succeed as businesses, whether you're three people or 30 people. Um, and the conversations I remember the most is like 2010, someone telling me, well, if you think it's tough getting to 12, wait till you get to 20. Or someone saying to me, how are you maintaining your employees and keeping them from going somewhere else? Or what do you do about customers and quality? How do you manage your receivables? Or do you pre-bill or do you post-bill? Those are the kinds of conversations that helped save Skeleton Keys Bacon and helped us succeed. Um, you've got to be a really good partner, and that means with FileMaker, which means sometimes you have to take it on the chin. Sometimes you have to do the work that's dirty and ugly and boring and repetitive because that's what they need as a partner. Sometimes you have to go to a meeting that doesn't bear any fruit with a potential prospect and sometimes they're going to give you an opportunity to meet with a client who's actually going to be a really great opportunity. Um, and similarly, you've got to do that with other people in this room. Um, I'm in a peer group with eight other FileMaker Platinum companies. Um, I've done exchanges informally with other FBAs where I've reached out to them and say, like David, for example, and said, uh, hey, I've got a client in this industry. I need to fund other clients in the industry who would talk to them and tell them that this platform is a fit. There's nothing in it for you but wasted time and effort to help me land a deal. And I found several people like David and Adam Aronson and others who were willing to do that kind of work to help each other. So when Brad talks about this kind and friendly community, he's not kidding. It's an enormous benefit to us. Uh, but it goes both ways. I have to be willing to do the same thing for one of them and make a priority out of my time to help them even if it's nothing in it for me. Um, and you have to be basically willing to do the kind of things I'm doing right now, which is basically say that you know nothing and ask for help. Um, I think it was maybe six years ago that I reached out to one of the, the owners of one of the companies here and I walked up and I said, I really want to have a business like yours. I don't know any way to get there. Would you be willing to mentor me? And there was, again, nothing in it for them. And I met with them probably once a month for an hour for about six years. That's a lot of their time and investment in me to help me grow my company and potentially compete with them. Uh, but you know, there's value to that mentorship. If you can give it, if you can get it, it really does help you hone your skills. But it first means starting admitting what you don't know. All right, so that's the business person side of it. Let's talk a little bit about your people. Um, anybody can learn FileMaker. I'm pretty much convinced about that. Um, these are the values that we look for in people at Skeleton Key. So these are our core values. I don't know how public people put their core values out there. We look uh, to make sure that our people are equipped, they're prepared to go out there with the right tools and the right knowledge, um, that they're candid and they're willing to speak truth to power, they're willing to be vulnerable, they're willing to basically say no to a customer, um, that they can communicate clearly so that clients understand, so that their teammates understand, that they're willing to be accountable for their mistakes and their successes, that they're willing and in incented to be effective and make sure that they actually get these things solved for the clients and they don't leave bugs and other kinds of quality issues behind or fail to look at the big picture, and that they care, like they have to be considerate. You know, they want to make sure that clients understand that they're thinking from the client's perspective when they send a communication or they want to interrupt a service or they want to make a change, that they're not going to do something disruptive, like a do no harm policy for a doctor. So we focus on this and then we help our people, you know, so we kind of hire for that. Like we kind of consider this when we're hiring, whether the person is demonstrating their ability. We ask people questions like, tell me about a time you told a client no, or tell me about a time when you really screwed up. And if a candidate doesn't have a good answer to those questions, they're probably not willing to be honest with us. They're probably not going to be honest with a the client. They're probably not going to own up and be accountable when something goes wrong, and something inevitably will go wrong. Um, so whatever your values are, I think the key thing is to know that those are probably more important than any of the technical skills or aptitudes someone might have in the beginning. If they can demonstrate whatever matters to you as a business, you can teach them the rest. And we've got two certified developers here who have like a year in FileMaker. They're already certified in two or three versions. One of them's already thinking of trying to speak next year. They're on fire because they met these kinds of criteria for us and that's what really mattered. Uh, I'm gonna struggle with my device. I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. 
So the last of my uh, primary slides here, because I'm almost done, is some of the challenges. If you are a buyer, like everyone here is a, is a vendor to somebody, and all of you are a customer. You have vendors of your own. Um, it's good to have a little bit of an understanding about the kinds of challenges your development partner is going through so that you don't necessarily judge them too harshly. First of all, you know, clients have inertia. They don't want to make change. Um, even if they contact you, you're going to find a lot of people who just are stuck in the way that they've been doing it forever and they don't necessarily want to do it differently. Then they're going to make, not make up their mind about what they actually want you to do. And no matter if you have an agile process or some other process that's supposed to divine that, you're still going to have some indecision along the way. And then once you've decided what it is you're going to do, then they're going to change their mind. Right? And that's really frustrating as a development company if you're trying to juggle inertia, indecision, and change from your clients. And then you've got complexity, and that's not solution complexity, that's marketplace complexity. You've got AWS, you've got Claris, you've got you know, plug-in manufacturers, you've got internet bandwidth and providers for your client, you've got power in the building, you've got politics in their office. All of these things make it really hard to deliver solutions effectively and on time and on budget to keep clients happy. Um, and then you've got what? 100 clients, a dozen clients, all of them think that they are the number one priority. You want them all to be treated like they are number one, but there's no way they can be. And so understanding that as a customer, you are one of potentially dozens of clients that your provider is serving, um, you know, again, it's a matter of tr them trying to figure out of all the fires that are happening right now, which fire is going to save the most lives. And then finally, and this might be the most important bullet on the slide, is that all your customers, they have businesses too. They know how hard it is to manage cash flow, employees, human resources, professional development, career paths, budgets. So do you. And so having candid conversations with your clients about being a business owner or running in a business or working with those challenges can actually be a really effective way of communicating with your clients. Every one of my clients in creative services, manufacturing, whatever, engineering, they were engineers first, they were creative people first, and now half their job is HR. Half their job is dealing with their people. They've risen to a point in their company where they no longer do what they love all the time, they have to do business, because we're all, that's kind of the common denominator for all of us, is that we're all doing business. So these are the kinds of conversations you want to be seeking at DevCon. The ones where there are no laptops, where there are just people talking to other people about the challenges of being in this marketplace and some of the things that they've found have worked. Maybe one of the best conversations I think I've ever had here was simply about collections and pre-billing versus post-billing. And that right there changed our cash flow as a company. So that's why we're here. We're here to be a good partner, so we sponsored and have a booth. We have nothing to sell at our booth. I'm going to save you money, hopefully, if you come and talk to us. Um, maybe you're a business owner and you'd like to just kind of vent for a little bit or ask a question about collections or hiring or something like that. Maybe you're a developer and you're in-house or you're out-house and you're trying to figure out the way to get your career kind of unstuck and move forward. Um, maybe you're a customer and you're not happy with your development partner or you're really happy with most of what they do, but not everything they do, and you want to find a way to communicate with them more effectively. We're here to help in any way we can um, to help this community grow, and we got nothing to sell. I mean, if you're a customer and you want a, another development partner, sure. If you're looking for a job, maybe there's a spot on our team. But honestly, the reason we're here is really just to give back to the community that's helped us get where we are. So there'll be no updates except to my company. So maybe next year there'll be a session and we'll talk a little bit about what's changed at Skeleton Key between now and then. I am guarantee I've already got some stuff on the horizon. But um, that's all I basically had to share today. Unless people have any questions or want to talk, I'll also be at the booth most of the time I'm here. That's it. Thanks. So I don't know how Q&A works here, but if someone has a question, speak up and I'll share it with the group and try to answer it super candidly. If not, you're free to go get lunch. Oh, David's got a question. Right, so um, I'm going to repeat it because I'm sure none of you could hear David. Um, David was saying that he thinks that bullet on administration is a really important one. Now, that's a thread that all business owners of any scale and size can understand. The weekends, the late nights, if I mistake any of this, let me know. Um, the long hours, the struggles, the successes, the failures, uh, all the different things about that um, is a really important piece of this presentation. It's a really important piece of our community. It's, it's something I know David himself has spoken about before as well, and something that I think is really a critical piece of the success. I'll tell you, FileMaker will talk to you about the technology, they'll talk to you about licensing, they'll talk to you about your business plan if you're an FBA. Um, but they're in, 
they're not going to necessarily talk to you about the nitty gritty details of being a business owner. Um, that's too much detail for them. They've got too many FBAs to talk to. These people are the people who are going to talk to you about that. And I mean, I'm, there's at least three people in this audience I've already I've talked to about our businesses of being in competition with one another and being in the same industry that have been instrumental in helping me as a business. So find those people for yourself here. If we can be that for you, we'd be happy to try. Yes. Sure. Sure. So the question is, um, what if your client relationship becomes untenable? Um, how do you end it? Right? And it's simple. Um, that's difficult. Uh, but I'll tell you, um, and we actually, every month we have a huddle as a company, and one of the things we talk about is um, new contracts, new clients we brought on board, and clients who've either fired us or we've fired them. Um, and so um, the short answer is, um, it's not easy, I think, but if you know in your gut, in my world at least, if you know in your gut that you need to let a client go, uh, the sooner you can do it, the better. We're, um, we're kind of big believers in our business when it comes to employees about hiring slowly and firing um, quickly, right? And so like, be really careful about who you hire, but when you know it's not right, you just know it's not right. Um, and that, the same is true with a client. I mean, you may have contractual obligations in terms of a warranty period or however you arrange your work. Um, you may have some collection issues there in terms of whether they've paid you, which is another reason we move to a prepay model as much as possible so that that's not a factor in my client uh, terminations. Um, we've had some, um, we often try to salvage those relationships. I remember one client who was somewhat abusive to my team. And so we, me and Greg, my uh, VP of App Dev, we went out and sat down with the client and basically let them talk about how they were unhappy and what they, were, what they liked and what they didn't like. And then we said, all valid concerns, we have one issue. You can't talk to our people the way you're talking. And if you keep talking to them like that, then I don't think we're a good fit with each other. Um, I expected him to tell us to get out of the office and fire us. And he was like, you're right, I shouldn't be that abusive. And he's still a client to this day. So I think that's another thing, is I'm a big believer in that candor. Like that's just our style, that may not be everyone's style, but what do you got to lose, right? Like if the client, if you're going to fire them anyway, but you might be able to keep their money flowing to you, you might as well try to just spell it out what's wrong in the most um, diplomatic way you can, but with a clear end game that if, if you can't come to some kind of accord, then you're done. And ideally you have been paid for all the services you've rendered, so the only thing you're losing is future opportunity with someone who you probably don't want to work with anyway. I hope that helps. Yeah. Dwayne. Yes. So um, Dwayne asked about something he knows that we do, which is, um, we actually practice something called open book management as a company um, uh, about 30 years ago. Am I okay on time? I haven't kept track on time, okay. Um, we ran into a, a book maybe, I guess in 2008, 2009, called The Great Game of Business. Um, it's uh, a methodology for running your business, basically where you educate your employees about financial literacy. Well, let me back up. The concept is like, sort of like playing sports, right? Yeah, if you want to learn how to, let's say, play baseball, first of all, you need to know and teach the rules of baseball. There's no way you can go out in the field and just start throwing the ball the wrong direction. You don't know which direction you run around the bases and how many innings there are. So you got to know and teach the rules of this game. Then you need a scoreboard. You need some way to know who's winning, you know, innings and hits and runs and all that stuff. And then you have to have a reason to care, like the World Series or like a pennant or something that gives them a person a reason like, to give a damn to go out there and actually work that hard. So the concept of the great game of business is you do the same thing in your business. Um, for us, it was a really good model because we were already very much about sharing information with our team, but we didn't have a framework to do it. Um, the great game of business basically says, you know, know and teach the rules. Teach your people what a profit and loss statement is. Start with a simple five line P&L, you know, income, cost of goods, gross margin, overhead, net income. Make sure people really understand that. Then move on to the balance sheet. Then start talking about your services and your pricing and your other costs. And, you know, all the other things, borrowing and interest and everything like that, get into cash flow, give them all the basics, do it over time, have a methodology, and we're really bad at this, do it for everybody new that you hire and then keep everybody current, almost like continuing education. Have a scoreboard, we meet every Monday at 8.30 at Skeleton Key and we look at how did we do last week and how are we doing year to date. This is like this week, this Monday was the first time we haven't had a huddle in probably years because so many of us are here. There would be no one to huddle. Um, but we keep everybody really aware and every month we have a much bigger huddle where we look at all those financial statements, we talk about why things are happening, people ask questions, we double click in QuickBooks and we drill into things. Um, and then we have a stake in the outcome. We have a reason to care, we have a profit sharing plan. 
It has changed every single year and the employees help design it so that they are personally incented to see us succeed as a company. You know, they know that if we are winning over here on the P&L that they're gonna win and take home more money, so they're paid to perform. And it gives them a reason to care about, should we get a new laptop or should we wait a year? You know, should we sponsor DevCon or should we do something different? Um, you know, as opposed to just sitting there and being like, can I get back to my development? We give them a reason to start thinking about the business. The flip side of this, I'll say for Duane, is um, we've had two people leave to go start their own business. You know, but that's okay. I mean, one of them went back to go work on an educational product that's not competing with us, and the other one wanted to actually work on BMWs and service them and start a garage. And that's what he loved. And I actually helped him like, come up with a business plan. And as much as I miss him, because he was an amazing builder, uh, I'm really happy for him that he found his passion and he was able to take the lessons we learned together to kind of run his own business. So it's, again, there's a lot of different ways to run your business. I definitely think Open Book is a, is a good start and everybody implements it differently. So be happy to talk about that with you as well. Um, it's a great book, it's an easy read, some good lessons in there no matter what you do. All right, I'll be at the booth, anyone wants to talk. Thanks for coming guys, I appreciate it.